Myron Waldman was one of the great unsung American animators, having contributed to Betty Boop, Popeye, Superman, and Casper the Friendly Ghost. He cut his teeth at Fleischer Studios back in 1931, his career culminating in 1997, when he was presented with the Windsor McKay Award for Lifetime Achievement in the Field of Animation. You started as an opaker. I happened to be very fast, so then they promoted me to inking. Fleischer's were the only studio that paid overtime. So I linked quickly that way too, and they were nice to me, the people. They had to promote people very fast, and I was lucky, and they liked what I, they saw, and they, after six months, I was animating. Of course, they'd give you the crowd scenes to do because nobody else wanted to do them. And uh, it finally worked out, and inside of two years, I became a head animator. Head animators were really, they were really the directors, actually. Dave Fleischer was credited with directing every single Fleischer cartoon. And he definitely had a hand in the direction of the cartoons, but a lot of the work, um, the day-to-day -day work of directing the cartoons was left to what they referred to there as the head animators. They had to be responsible for, um, well, approving the recordings because, you know, they, you had to have a um, dialogue, recorded dialogue first, and then Myron would map out the whole picture. They would be known as thumbnail sketches. They would choose the camera angles, the camera setups, and make sure that everything was going to fit together, and they would hand the work out to the animators and approve it. Dave, I considered him the best gag man I ever knew, and he knew what he was doing. Some people found him a little aggressive. I didn't. I get along very well. In fact, he once told me, your criticism hurts, but you tell the truth. <laughs> Max, of course, was a perfect gentleman all the time. I never heard him raise his voice. They asked who helped him with Betty Boop. He gave a list of four names and he included me, too. She was a dog. And when I say dog, it's a, the animal. She had long ears. What bothered me, that her eyes were a block apart, you know? <laughs> you could drive a train. We gradually pulled them closer and it, it worked. And she didn't always have that pout when she was in a pleasant situation. So we started doing it. And we never used her in profile, because it was, it was horrible. But Pudgy, her little dog, that's all my creation. I don't know if he, if he cared for Popeye that much. I mean, um, <laughs> he always said, what did he ever see in olive oil, first of all? You know, he, he thought Popeye had poor taste <laughs> in women. <laughs> And Myron never cared for the violence that much, you know, and with, and I think Can You Take It, there was a lot of violence in that one. Oh yeah, Can You Take It, I did it with Tom Johnson. It was something about Popeye wanted to join their club and they wouldn't take him because he knew out there and they beat the hell out of him, you know. Then he goes, he's supposed to go through initiation, see. So there was a big folding case that had knives in it, you know, enough to kill anybody. If you, and he walks in, you, and they're laughing happy, and you hear the thing grind to a halt, and it opens up. The knives are all bent, you know, and he's all right. Curses! At the end of it, Popeye ends up in the hospital, finding out that he couldn't take it. Olive, I think, was a nice, she gives him the spinach, he eats the spinach. And pops right back up and destroys everyone. <laughs> Most of the series is a lot of fun to watch. You get the idea that these were fun films to make. He liked the, well, he did the one called, I think it was called The Hawaiian Birds, and, and he did Mr. Bug Goes to Town. He liked the ooh and ah pictures. Those, those, those were his favorites, yeah. All with happy endings. I do remember one where uh, Seymour and I tell came over, he said, who did that animation? Thinking it was one of the Coast guys that came in. I said, I did. He was very, I said, yeah, I just use more drawings like they do, you know? There was something about West Coast and East Coast animators that, you know, never the twain shall meet, kind of. Good luck, they could have it. 
Some, somebody said to me, aren't you jealous? Look at the lines around the, was it the Roxy Theater where Disney's picture was playing. I said, no, I just got a new contract with more money. That's why should I be mad? Cause I popped by the sailor man. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! When I look at those Superman cartoons they did, they actually look, those cartoons look like they were enthused about doing these. These were different, these were great, and they knew they were great. They didn't want to do it because it cost them, but the Paramount did give them $100,000 for each picture, and they needed it. We had specialists do different things. I did uh, the picture called Billion Dollar Limited, which is in the archives in that museum down in Washington. big, you know. I did the Japa tours. That was already propaganda, you know. And I remember Secretary of State came through the studio at that time. And he came through my room. Attention, all pilots. Giant bomber being stolen. Take off immediately. This looks like a job for Superman. Animation was not a one-man job, you know. Very good background artists, and we had terrific musical directors. You laid out a picture, it was like laying out a musical. He said um, what, made him, what made him such a success, uh, and when I say success, I don't mean money-wise, I mean inner contentment is success as far as I'm concerned. And he said that what made it so good for him was that he loved his work. He just loved it, really. Till the, till the very end, he just loved drawing. <laughs> 